In this video, I'll show you how you can lay out your UVs for a polygonal object in Maya, and then export that UV layout to Photoshop where you can paint your own texture, and then bring it back into Maya for a round trip from Maya to Photoshop and back for custom painted texture maps on polygonal objects. So I'll get started here in Maya, and I've got a polygonal cube here that does not have any UVs assigned to it, and I can confirm that by opening up the UV texture editor, and I can see that there are no UVs assigned to this piece of geometry. So I'll create some UVs here by opening up the Hypershade window. And I'll create a new Lambert shader. I'll rename that to be Dice. And then I'll assign that shader to the geometry. And now I want to open up the attributes for that shader. And I'm going to assign a texture map that is the UV utility node. So I can come in here and select the object and then come up to my polygons submenu and under create UVs I'm going to choose a planar mapping and if I hit 6 on the keyboard we can see that texture map is now assigned to that piece of geometry. And I'm just using this projection map as a kind of a generic placeholder for my UVs because here you can see how those uh, UVs are stretching along the sides here. And what we're going to do is unfold this cube so we can lay out our UVs. So I'll start that uh, UV layout process by selecting some edges on the uh, object itself. I'll go into edge selection mode and I'll select these outer edges of the top face here. They're all selected and highlighted in orange. And then I'll use my cut tool to cut those UVs and create those border edges. And if I'd like to see those border edges, I can turn on the display under polygons, texture border edges, and they'll show up bold now. I can now start to unfold the UVs in this cube by selecting all of the UVs in a pick box and then pressing the unfold tool and that will separate the UVs that I just selected from the main cube here. So this layout is a start, but what I really want to do is unfold all of these faces on the cube so that they will lie flat on the same plane. So I can come in here now and select these interior edges. And you see as I go around here and I'm shift selecting each one of those edges, that those are each one of these vertical edges on our cube. And now with those edges selected, if I come up here and cut those edges, you can see they become bold here as well. And now one more time, if I come in and select all of my UVs and hit the unfold tool, now all of those UVs are lying flat in the UV layout. I can make this a little bit better by trying to square up this UV shell so it's oriented towards the vertical axis here. And I can do that by selecting the faces. I've got them all selected now, but I'd like to deselect this top face, so I'll shift and select that so it's not part of the selection group. And then I can come in here and choose Convert Selection to UVs, and now I've got all the UVs associated with that lower shell. If I hit E on the keyboard, I can come in here now and start to rotate those so that they are oriented horizontally and vertically. And the next thing I'd like to do is merge these common edges. So I'll take this top shell and move that up out of the way. And then I'll select this edge. And I can see where that edge lies in my perspective view on the polygon. What I want to do is find that adjoining edge in this top surface. There it is there. So I want to select that edge and this edge together. And then I can use my Merge and Sew tool. So with both of those edges selected, I can come up here and say Move and Sew UV Edges. And that will join both of those. And then my last step is to get this entire UV shell to fit inside the 0 to 1 space of the texture map. So I can come in here and select all of the UVs. And then I'll do another UV layout to get it to fit all inside of that 0 to 1 space. Now what you can see is based on this UV utility texture map is that all of the UVs on this polygon are evenly spaced and uniformly distributed so that all the faces of the polygon are receiving a nice even distribution of UVs based on this UV layout.
My next step is to replace this UV utility map with an actual painted image of my graphics that I'd like to apply in Photoshop. So I'll show you how we can send this UV layout as an image file over to Photoshop where we can start painting our texture. I'll start by selecting the object in the perspective view so that it's highlighted and active. And then inside of my UV texture editor, I'll select from the polygon pull down menu. All the way at the bottom, it says UV snapshot. If I select that, it comes up with a dialog box that allows me to export these as an image file. So I'll reset this dialog box so you can see the default settings and I'll increase the resolution of the texture map from 256 to 1024 and that'll be uh, the aspect ratio will keep that square and instead of exporting this as a Maya IFF file I'll pull that down and select the PNG file format and then I'll rename the default file here from out UV I'll call that cube UV and then I'll hit OK and that file is saved in my current projects images directory. Now I can switch to the finder and look at my current project folder images directory and there's the file that I just created and what I'd like to do is copy that into a working Photoshop folder so I can edit that file. So I'll copy that down to my Photoshop folder and then I'll open this file in Photoshop. Because we saved this file as a PNG format, the background is transparent and the UVs are showing up here as gray lines. Those gray lines represent the UVs of our layout. And if I open up the utility node, I can bring that into this file as well. I'm going to click on the layer that is the image utility node and hold the shift key and let go. And that will show up as a new layer here in my Photoshop file. I can drag that layer below the UVs so that you can now see the UVs on top. The UVs are a little bit hard to see in this current layout because the lines are so thin. So I'll show you a technique that will get those UV lines to stand out more. I can close out this file of the UV texture node. And I'll select the layer that has the UV graphics in it. And I'll add a color overlay to that layer. So I'll come down here to my effects menu and say color overlay and I'm going to set that color to be red and click OK and now those lines are showing up red here so they're a little bit more visible but I'd like to make them a little bit bolder so in addition I can also select another effects and select stroke and in the stroke menu you can see in the preview the stroke is getting a little bit bolder there I'd like the color of the stroke to also be red, so I'm selecting that here in the color picker. And 3 is a little bit too bold, so I'll knock that down to 1. And that's just enough so you can see the edges there, so I'll click OK. And now we can see the outline of our UV shell here in Photoshop. Now that we can see that shell, we can start to paint our graphics in Photoshop. So I'll come in here and create a new layer. And I'll drop that layer below my UV graphics. And I'm going to fill that layer with color white. So I'll come up here to edit, fill, and select white. And now I've got a white layer that I can start to paint my graphics on. And I'm going to do something simple for this demonstration. I'm going to uh, create a dice graphic here. And I'll use my brush tool and I'll start painting in each one of these faces of the UVs, the different sides of a pair of dice. The only parts of this graphic that will get translated back into Maya are the parts that lie within these faces of our UV layout. Any stray marks outside this box won't get translated back to Maya because they don't lie within the UV space. Now that I've created my graphics here in Photoshop, I want to save that out as a Photoshop document that will maintain all of the layer information. So I'll come up here to my pull down menu and say File Save As. And I'm still working in my Photoshop folder and I'll call this dice UV and save it in a Photoshop format with the layers intact. That way if I want to come back in here later and repaint some of this I still have the layers that I've set up here in Photoshop. 
In order to make the round trip back to Maya though, all I want to send back is the graphics itself. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of the layer of the UV layout and I'll turn off my utility node. So the only thing visible is the graphics that I want to send. And I'll save this as a PNG file. So I'll do a file save as and change the format from Photoshop to PNG and export that. Now in order to make the round trip back into Maya, I can switch over to the finder and take that dice UV graphic that we just created and I'll copy that into my Maya source images directory. And now that I've added that to that folder, we can now load that graphic back into Maya. So I'll switch back into Maya. And here in Maya, I'll open up my Hypershade view. And I'm going to select the shader that is assigned to the geometry. And if I double click on that utility node file texture, that will open up here in my attribute editor. And what I'll do is replace this graphic with a new graphic that we just painted in Photoshop. So I'll click the input node next to that graphic and choose the dice graphic that we just painted. And as you can see now, the dice graphic that we painted in Photoshop has now been applied to the object based on the UV layout that we painted previously. So the only parts of this graphic that are applied to the polygon are the parts that lie within this UV space. So the stray marks that I've made out here are not part of that layout. If I wanted to include some of those stray marks, I can move some of the UVs in the UV texture editor to include those areas. So I'll come over here and select the face that's associated with this shell. And I'm going to convert that selection of the face to the UVs. And then I'll hit the scissors tool to cut those UVs out. And now I can reselect those UVs by going through the same process. And as I move these UVs around, you can see how I can align it to the different parts of the graphic that we painted earlier. So those are some of the tools and techniques you can use to paint a custom texture map in Photoshop and then apply that as a UV map in Maya.